fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit, God, to every single one of us, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you because you love us, God. You loved us even when we were sinners, God. My Lord, you love us so much, God. And we just thank you, God. Fill every single one of us right now, God, with your presence, God. Just pour yourself out. Come on, it's for the taking. You open your mouth. You tell him, God, give me more of you, God. I'm not satisfied with what you got on me right now, God. I want more of you, God. Engulf me with your presence. Engulf me with your presence. Hallelujah. We just glorify you, God. Blessed be your name, God. You're holy, 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 God. My Lord, you come and present yourself upon your people, God. My Lord, we're not worthy, God, but in your presence, God, there's something that attracts your attention towards us, God. And we just come together to praise and glorify your name, God. We just want to lift up your name, God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, just move in the midst of it all. Just fill us up. Touch every single one of us in the name of Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you just learn things. It's, even when I was praising and glorifying God, I started feeling like a pressure on my back. I don't know if you got that pressure. A lot of times it could be pressure of what you're facing. It could be financial. It could be anything. If you're feeling that way and you want to be free tonight, you can be free tonight. You can be free tonight. Don't take that with you. That's not for you to carry. The Bible says that he will fight for us and we should remain calm. If you're feeling like a, like a heaviness, a burden, even Jesus said, my yoke is light. It's light. When we walk with God, you shouldn't feel nothing. Is it like the Bible says that he gives us that uh, a seed of, of, of mustard seed of faith that we can tell any mountain to move? I can, I can tell you, I don't see no more mountains because you trust in God. You trust in God. You don't see no more mountains. And God can take you to that place. But it's all, it's all for the taking. It's for the taking. That's why it's so important, the renewal of our minds, that we will renew our minds. I was saying earlier that a lot of times we'll, we'll pick up the negative. We'll pick up the, the, the wrong things that are set upon us. But when it's, it's, it pertains to the Word of God, it's like it's a little bit harder to believe that. But it's the Word of God. It's His promises and His blessings. He is for every single one of us. I'm telling you, I'm a miracle. <laughs> A womanizer, a cursor, walking with methamphetamine in my pocket, drinking alcohol. My plan coming back from Iraq is I was going to see somebody and I was either going to kill him or he was going to kill me because I had so much anger in myself. And even, even, even Joseph told, told his brothers because the brothers were afraid of him. He's like, you know what? We did this. And, hey, wait, hold up. He said, with an enemy intended for evil, God turned it into good. And that's what God wants to do in your life, even whatever, even if it was your own decision. God don't even hold that against us. But there's one thing that he's not going to do. He's not going to come and force himself to you. You know his presence is here. You know he's here with us. See, in the Old Testament, where they had the temple, they say, when you go in, don't come out the same door. And what it meant for us now spiritually, when you come in carrying all those burdens, don't go out with them also. I can't tell you when I received Jesus Christ, because I was playing the reconcile game. Go to the world, reconcile. Go to the world. And I, I couldn't catch what God wanted to do in my life. I feel so good and everything. As soon as I closed those church doors, like boom, everything came back down. I couldn't catch what he wanted to do. But all he wanted us to be, and, and they spoke about it on Sunday, was be obedient to him. Just surrender yourself to him. We're so used to, in order to obtain something, we got to do something to obtain something. It's totally different with God. All we got to do is surrender. The Bible says acknowledge him in all your ways. Trust in him and he will do. God is so awesome. God is so awesome. He's so amazing. He, he loves us so much. I honestly don't even know what, a, what, what attraction we have towards Him. But the Bible says that He visits us every day. The angels look at us and be like, what's in them? Because we, we, we catch God's attention. And that's why it's so important, the renewal of our minds. I, I've been, it'll be in September, every 15 years in God's past. The first 10 years, man, it was all religion. It was all this. It was all like like mistreated and everything. But I thank God because, as I was telling you, I was in the, uh, in the reconciliation game. And in 2007, September, the Lord told me, the Holy Spirit told me, and it wasn't a judgmental voice. It was a nice, sweet, beautiful voice. He told me, it's your last time. And believe me, I've been stepped on. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated by pastors, deacons, ushers, brothers and sisters. And I could keep going on. But my focus has just been on Him. It's just been on Him. And that's what we got to do, especially at these times. Because, I mean, you see all the chaos. And it's not to, for you to wear up. No, this is the time that God has given us to be able to equip ourselves. 
stop and think when, when you started going to church, something had to call you. You, you know, every time I come up here, I, I, I know uh, I, I feel butterflies in my, in my stomach. I'm, I'm like, I'm crying. It's, it's not easy just to come and speak because I don't want to speak what I want to speak. Because, you know, the Bible says that we will all be held accountable of what we hear. Why, why do you think we don't start to just service just with the preaching? Because everybody's thinking, oh, did I turn off the stove? Oh, did I do this? Oh, what happened? No, but through the praise and worship, we all come together. And it's just that peace that you feel. The peace was already here. The peace was already walking with you. But it's because of things that you face that it, it, sometimes it drifts you away. But if you stay with them, if you stay right there with them, in Ephesians 3, it says that even when you wake up, don't let it be the, the, your phone. Don't let it be your coffee. A lot of people say, man, if I can't get my coffee, I can't go. We got the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians 3 says how to activate your spiritual man. How you activate it when you get up, just thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you because I'm up. Then you just start glorifying him. What you're doing, you're activating the spiritual man. You're walking with Christ Jesus. And then through Christ Jesus, God is starting to give you more wisdom and knowledge. See, the Bible says that those who diligently seek him, that we will find him. That song that says, the more I seek you, the more I find you. It's biblical. If you just pour yourself out to him, you will give him his time. And like I tell you, a lot of people say it's hard, it's hard. It's hard. No, it, it's hard in the beginning because we're so used to our flesh. We're so used to doing our way, the desires of the, of, of the flesh. But when you start putting that to the side, hey, God starts to move in your life. God, God's already waiting for you. God's already waiting for you. I see a lot of times when something happens and we're praying for it, God already did it, just your body has to catch up to it. It's already been done in the spiritual realm. Everything has already been done. Hallelujah. We're going to read in, in uh, Colossians 2. Hallelujah. And I like it. I wanted to share this scripture also with 6 and 7. And, and that's how when we started with rooted. Because this is be rooted in Christ. And th that's the scriptures that we got. And you got you to realize when you, when you start something, so many people get so excited. And man, we used to be like 30 of us when we started. And man, everybody was like, man, it was working and everything. And then little by little, well, they wanted to do it that way. They wanted to do it that way. Then it, it, it got a little bit hectic. Now it's like four or five years later, and we don't have those 30. We got like maybe like from the beginning that we started, we don't have the same ones. But we keep our focus on God. That's what we keep our focus on God. And that's what we always have to do as brothers and sisters, that we keep our focus on God. Because a lot of people have come to the church because we've been church hurt, right? A lot of people have rebelled against God because of things that happen in church. So, you know how freedom is. That's why it's called freedom, freedom. So, when you come in here and then, and he always says it. There was a, a, a lady that came up on Sunday that she couldn't find me. I said, I couldn't find you, Bobby. And I said, you don't need Bobby. I said, you just need to call on God at that moment. And she prayed over him. And, and that's the thing that if, if you keep focusing your eyes on man, you're going to go back again to the same way. Uh, he might say something that you don't approve. I might not hug him, forget to hug you, and be like, well, they didn't hug me. See, but you got to deny yourself because when you deny yourself, like 90% of your problem is just poof. And you'll be like, wow, that's easy. Yeah, because we got to deny ourselves. We're so used to that. Oh, uh, 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 me, myself, and I remember me, myself, and I. But now it's the total opposite. It's God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit that you got to just focus on him. And he's going to provide everything. Why do you think that it, uh, the, the main verse around here is, is ye seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness? And everything else is going to be lined up. Hallelujah. It says on the Colossians 2, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have in your behalf, and for those who are at Laodicea, and for all those who have not personally seen my face, that their, their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, and that they would attain to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding resulting in the true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. So he's just encouraging the people because we know how it is. It gets discouraging at times. We're ready to throw the towel. And you need people that have the Holy Spirit. That when you come around them, they'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it's happened to me. Sometimes I go through situations out there and, and I'm like, I don't realize it. Because a lot of times you don't realize it. And then I come to, to Pastor and I say, hey, Pastor, this, this. And then he just clarifies it like so simple. I'm like, wow, okay, thank you, God. I mean, I thank God for, for, this, for this man that he put it on, 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 on my life. Because we've been here going to five years. And the first 10 years, believe me, 
it was, it, I, I believe that being sick was a, a humble way to show to God. You, you know, God, I'm sick, okay. But he took our pain and sickness to the cross of Calvary. I, I, I believe so many things that sometimes when, when I would say out here like, hey, you don't know if it's your last time here at church. Praise him, glorify him, throw everything out. And he's like, well, we don't want to put fear on the people. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Because it's all about love. It's all about love. We got to love one another. If, 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 if you have any anger, if you have any, any gossiping, a, a, any division, I mean, your love has gone cold. And what the, the Bible says, because of the love of many have gone cold, in which way? Lawlessness, which is iniquity, which is evil. So I would say, like, if, if, if I kind of feel like a little bit different to my sister, I got to check myself. I got to check myself. When, when, when we came over here and... Uh, Pastor gave me the, the, the where to run the food pantry and everything. We had a lot of homeless out here. And believe me, you probably don't know about this, but I would come and it was a mess. I would clean it up. I would come, another mess, clean it up. And I would tell them when they would be, they'd be laying there, they were me cleaning. And I said, look, I'm not asking you to clean it up. Just keep it clean. And it kept going and kept going. And then it, it, it came to a point where I came. One time there, there was like human poop on the side. And I'm like, all right. And he with a smile, cleaning it and everything. And it, it kept going on. But how, how, how did I continue loving on him? It was God's love. It wasn't my love because it wasn't me. In two or three days, I was, you know what, Pastor? Shut him off. And it would come to my mind. But I would be like, but wait a minute. They've been here for years. The homes are still here. So how am I just going to, in three or four days, just be like, man, change everything. But it, but it was always God's love. Because that's what we got to do. We gotta, when we wake up, you got to renew your love and let it be God's love. Because same thing, like all the people that come here, there's a lot of people that come and they're, they're not grateful. They just want to give me a food. And, and I mean, what I'm saying, like, we still love on everybody. And even, even at the events, when people were rude, this is what we tell the people, the volunteers. I said, look, I, I don't want you to put your face. I don't want you to be right disrespectful or nothing. But just step back and let me put my face. Let me come and, and just to love on the people. Because a lot of times... We don't realize what they're going through. And us, as we know the word of God, as we know the love of God, as we know the joy and the peace and the patience and what we should be walking as to the, whole, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we should be able to kind of step back. Okay, hey, let me show love. They're not showing love, but I want to show love. But like I said, I go back. Even Apostle Paul said, we got to go back to our first love. Because it's like one occasion, like if I do with my brother and he makes me a face, all right. I don't realize it, but I carry that. Then sister, and she does me another face. So whenever she comes, he's all humble and they want to love on me. And I'm like, I, what, I, what I carry from them, I'll pour it out on her. And we don't realize it, that we got to refresh ourselves on a daily basis. There's this song that used to go one day at a time, right? one day at a time. I mean, with all the chaos, it's more like one hour at a time. You got to step back. Whatever situation you went through, you need to step back and say, okay, God, I'm not going to carry nothing that's not of you, God. I know I got mistreated. I know they spoke bad about me. But hey, I'm going to keep going. That's what I've done. I just keep my focus on God. I, the first 10 years, I was in four or five churches. And I'll tell you, the, the pastor felt threatened by me. They thought I wanted to be a pastor. I never wanted to be a pastor. I was there to support the vision. I was in the, in the army for 14 years. So I got that a military mentality. And you, you know, brother, it's just, hey, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And I would see things, and I would tell them, hey, let's do this, let's do that. And, and it was more like putting pressure on them because they used to just, just dragging and just doing the little thing. And, and I remember a sister always would tell me, well, brother, we need to pray, we need to pray, we need to pray, we need to pray. And if, if I would have just prayed and prayed and prayed, I would still be in that church. Because, you, yeah, you got to pray, and then you got to move. You got to move. I, you know, I've done things, not, not wrong things, but I'm saying I'm, I've done things the wrong way, but with all my heart. And the Holy Spirit comes and says, no, 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 this is the way I want it. This is the way I want it. Why? Because I've, I've gone through so much. I've seen people going through so much. I've hurt so many people. And now I just want to love on people. I just want to show them that there's a God that what he did in my life, he could do it in your life. Stop and think like 15 years ago, I, I, I was lost in drugs and alcohol. I used to work for Walmart for eight years. Um, in my name tag, they couldn't pronounce Arnulfo. It's just, so it says Gomez, fired up Gomez. I was always on fire. You ever been to a Walmart? They got a, a, a Walmart meeting in the front. They're like, give me a squiggly. Give me another squiggly. Give me an M. Give me an A. And you get them fired up. And then they go put out the, the merchandise, take care of your customers, this and that. Then I will go to the restroom, do me a little line and be like, and then I look myself in the mirror. And I'm like, wow, they knew who their leader was. And I was, I was like that for a while. 
I transferred from, from Dalton, Georgia, down to the Walmart on 27, close to 27 on, on Cypress Garden, the, the farther one. And like I tell you, I had him on fire and everything. And I, I, got, I got caught because I took like up to $7,000 from the cash office because I was a salary manager. I had keys, codes for everything. And they couldn't pinpoint how I took it. I'm not going to tell you either, right? But they couldn't pinpoint how I took it, but they see me coming in on the video. So when I talked to, when the store manager talked to me, he was like, man, I can't believe it was you. I said, never, never would I thought it would have been you. You know, I have to go back to the other two managers that I thought it was them, and I need to go and apologize to them. He's like, why, Gomez, why? And I went from a hero to zero. Five-year probation, a felony, restitution pay up to $10,000. I was behind like twenty-seven, thirty-two thousand dollars in child support. I hadn't done my taxes like in ten or twelve years. Whose decision was that? <laughs> but God, but God, I, I cannot add everything up and tell you, oh, this is how that got paid. But everything is paid. I'm up, up to par and everything. But it's, it's all God. And, and if you see that right there, it was my mistakes. It was my decisions. But even when we make wrong decisions, God, God is not going to let you drown in them. Unless you just want to stay there and not reach out to them. You can be like in the water just like that and you can see him and be like, no, I can get out of this one. I can get out of this one. Until you put your hands up and you say, God, help me. Then he will help you. He's not going to come and force himself to you. He loves you so much. He left his throne and came and walked among us and died on the cross of Calvary. But that's a decision that we have to make. It's a decision that we have to make. And like I tell you, the first 10 years, I, uh, there were so many reasons of why I, 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 I could have given up. Things that happened within our family. We lost a baby when my wife was 15 weeks uh, pregnant. I remember that Sunday evening, she told me I went to bed to go to work. And she's like, woke me up, says, pray. And then I, I got on my knees, I prayed, I finished, I laid down. And she woke me up all through the night. Then like around 5.30 or 6 in the morning, I hear her scream like I've never heard her scream before. She was on the toilet and I heard water. And then she called me and says, come and get the baby. Come and get the baby. So I went and grabbed my baby. My baby was about that big. And I hold her in my hands. My baby moved in my hands and my baby died in my hands. I was already walking with God. I was being obedient. I was, I was going out there preaching the word and everything. But a lot of times when we go through something, it's, it's not for God to know where our heart is because he knows everything. But it's for us to know how our relationship is with God. Because I could have drifted. I could have, I could have just like, that's it, God. And we, we go through, I mean, it's, don't think because, oh, I'll join him. No, we go through it. But greater is he that lives inside of us. And like I tell you, I mean, I don't care whatever I go through. I don't care what happens and all that. I'm not going to stop glorifying him and thanking him, even for the good and the bad things. In 2013, I walked into Jesus' room, and, and he was there hanging, taking his life off. And his body was already shaking and everything. And I, it shocked me. I was like, no, no, God, I'm, I'm trying to pull him up. And I feel like a pressure pulling him down. I grab the rope and knock him down and take everything. I'm like, Papi, Papi. And I call him. I said, you were taking your life away. He's like, no, Dad, I was in bed falling asleep. We were already out there and everything. I remember when they Baker make, act him because it's like three days, right? They kept him there like a whole week. And there was no medical explanation of him not remembering him tying himself up. And they did cash scan and everything. And they even asked my wife, I said, you know your children? He says, is he lying? He's like, no, he's not lying. And it's just things after things, but we keep our focus on God. I remember my wife said, like, man, that's too much. Let's just, let's just stop this and not, not do this no more. And I just told her, can you see how much we've embarrassed the enemy? You don't think he's going to come and, and try to destroy us completely? Because that's what he does, kill, steal, and destroy and that's why it's so important when we come to the house of the Lord. It's not just coming. It's just coming and that you would have that transformation in your life. If there's no transformation every time you come to service, you got to back up and say, okay, God, what's wrong with me? I, I, we all want to go from glory to glory and victory to victory. Even when we go through trials and tribulations, that's not where we're at. That's not our final destination. We continue going forward. But we got to be rooted and grounded in love. Love is the one that does it. Bible says that his love covers the multitude of sin. So you loving on somebody that don't even want to know about God. You love on somebody that, been, that feels that they're so drifted away from God. What happens is that sin is covered because of the love that you're showing towards him. 
and then you can speak the word. You can, you can tell them about salvation or you can give them a hug. Whatever God guides you through the Holy Spirit. And you'll see that change. We have to be active. We have to, once we, once, once we get out of these four walls, this is just like, the, this is what the church was. The, the church was fellowship, break bread, and glorify God. And the church was, when we came together, all right, Brother Junior, what's going on over there in Lake Wells? No, we're, we're moving this way. We're going, how you need help? Okay, we're going to send help over there. Sister Kay, how are you doing over there in Columbia? No, we're doing this. It was just for us to be able to equip ourselves and be seeing how the church was growing. It wasn't for us to come drag, you know. Hey, it happens. But what I'm saying, you got to catch that. You got to catch when the movement of the Holy Spirit, that he wants to fill you up. He wants to equip you. He wants to prepare you for things out there. As we speak, the enemy could be putting booby traps and all that. Whenever you face it, hey, you're equipped, and you can go through it. It won't be that, oh, I, I fell again. No, because every, every single one of us knows our weakness. Every single one of us knows our temptations. Every single one of us knows if we're going through a struggle. And it, it's not for, sometimes we come and worship God, and we're worshiping Him, and we're holding our sin. No, let everything go. Give it all to God. A burden, just give it all to God. God will help us. God will help us. He will never forsake us, the Bible says. It's just on number, number three, yeah, thank you. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this so that no one will deceive you with the persuasive arguments. For even though I am absent in body, I am nevertheless with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your orderly manner and the stability of your faith in Christ. your faith in Christ. I always say that when we go through something, it's that little gap that we go through it. If I respond the way that I shouldn't be responding, guess what? I'm going to go again through it. Boom. Have my, 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 my same test. And that's what happens to us. Sometimes we're just going like circle and circle and circle. This is the only thing. Getting in the Word and, 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 and talking with Him. Talking with Him. I didn't, I didn't even any chance that you have. That you will talk to him. He's not going to ignore you. He's going to speak to you. Because God loves every single one of us. And whatever trial you're going through, hey, it's the way that we respond. That he elevates us. Because, see, the Holy Spirit was sent with power and authority. He wasn't sent in levels. We're the ones that, that, that receive that level. But if you go out there, you pray over somebody, they will get healed. If you pray over someone, you see, the other day I was, um, it was 7 in the morning, I stopped at, at the 7-Eleven, and we, we, I heard this lady in the front saying about something about her, her ankle and all that, and you know, when they see something like that opportunity, it's like, boom. My first 10 years, I would be like, okay, I'll pray with her at home, or, or, or even, hey, sis, I heard about that, I'm, I'm, we're going to pray for you at church, but now it's like, it's at that moment, so she went to her car, and I I went right behind her. I paid my first stuff and went behind her. And then I'm like, and she's like, because, you know, <laughs> so she rolled down her window. And I'm like, hey, God bless you, ma'am. I heard about your ankle. I said, I said okay, if I pray for it. And she was like, for real? I said, if, if you want me to, I can pray for you. Said, okay, okay. So it was an inside foot. So she, she just tested over. And then I grabbed her foot. I started declaring healing. And I prayed. And, and she, I said, start moving. And she was moving. It's like, you know what, that's, that's, that's the most beautiful thing somebody has ever done in my life. Just a prayer. Just a prayer. One, one time the other day that we were at, at uh, Golden Corral, and, you know, we're mindful where they're eating, and my sister Barbara was talking to somebody. There was two ladies that were, like, drift away, and they said, well, come and sit with us. So we got, like, uh, two strangers in our, in our table, and then she started ministering to, to a lady, and then she said, Brother, Pastor, Oman, can you come and, and pray for us? So started praying for her. Then another lady was like, you know what? I want to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So we pray for her also. And it's just things that it, it can be at any place. But we got to get out of that comfort zone. When you do it the first time, you're going to be like, wow, God. Thank you, God. You're going to realize, why weren't you doing it before? Why weren't you doing it before? And you're going to have your ups and downs. Um, there was one time when, when I'm at the coffee and I hear these two guys just going at it. They're going through cancer. They're going through, they got appointments at the doctor now. And I got my coffee. I paid for it and I went and sat in my van. And it was like, like, like you can hear me, that like Holy Spirit, like, oh, you're not going to talk to them about me? 
I'm like, all right. So at that at that time, we had a radio station, a Spanish radio station in uh, Auburndale. So I grabbed a, fly, a flyer, and I went over there, and I'm like, hey, I said, God bless you. How you doing? He's like, he's like, good. I said, hey, sorry, I was hearing your conversation and everything. I said, you know, there's a God that can hear you, heal you right now. I mean, he loves you, and one of them just stand up. He's like, we don't want to hear none of that. Get out of here. And just like that, I went to the van. I sit down. I'm like, what was that all about, God? <laughs> because we're going to get rejected. But that, that doesn't mean that we stop. We're going to get rejected. I mean, thank God the sacrifice of what Jesus Christ did. And all he asks us is just to praise him and worship him. Can you see the, the sacrifice that he did? And he's, he's not asking us to go and, and hang on a cross or nothing. Man, imagine that. But all he wants is our obedience and to praise him and glorify him. Recognize him in your life. Hallelujah. So it says six. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Having been firmly rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith, just as you were instructed and in overflowing with gratitude. What do testimonies do? They elevate your faith, no? Or even when somebody says, man, I went through this, I went through that, you're like, wow, and I'm over here drowning on a cup of water. Look at what they went through. Because that, that, that's, that's the fellowship, and that's when we come together. Because a lot of times you don't realize if you miss church, you're missed. Maybe them, everybody didn't tell you, but you're missed because we're, 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 like, we're a big puzzle, and we're all part of it. You might think that, oh, I just went. and No, no, no. You're part of it. Don't allow for the enemy to put nothing in your mind. You, see, we get to that point where we hear it a lot. It's just like, eh. You go to another church, they don't hear that. You tell them, hey, you're awesome and amazing. Oh, really? And over here it's like, no. Sometimes we just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I hear that a lot. I, I sometimes... When, when you go to the cashiers and you pay them, hey, God bless you. Like, all right, yeah. Another one, you go, hey, God bless you. Oh, thank you. I needed that. Because you're blessing them. You're asking God to change their destiny, to bless them in a, in a way that you can, but that he can. And there's a lot of people that know how to receive it. You know, I'm always fired up. I go to a lady, hey, it's fired up Friday. Come, hey, God bless you. How you doing? She's like, must be for you. And she just keeps scanning. I'm like, because there's, 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 there's a lot of people that don't know what love is. And that's the main thing that that, that we go back to our first love. That we go back to our first love. What, 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 did, what would we used to do, like, even for the church and all that? Look, those 10 years, I, used to, I, I, I throw myself out. Been doing this and that. I will vacuum up. And even my wife would say, you know what? They don't even appreciate you. And I'm, you know what? I don't care. I said, I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for him. And that's what we've got to do it for him. Everything that we do, even when we come and volunteer, hey, you're doing it for him. You don't realize that when you come and volunteer and you show love to the people that come out here, they're part of the kingdom of God. Every single one of us is part of the kingdom of God. So you're putting God first through them. You're, you're taking care of their needs. You think God's not going to honor that? Even when you go out there and, and you, you just pray on somebody, or even you go out there, there's been times where I'll, I'll pay the cup of coffee of the guy behind me, and it's like I gave him $1,000. Wow, really? Thank you, sir. I'm like, that's how, that's how much a big of a need is in the world. $5 in your pocket could do like a glorious thing in a person out there. Imagine you just going and praying over somebody. And it's like Pastor said, well, if it doesn't happen, it didn't happen. Hey, you, you were obedient. It's like, it's like we want to see the miracles right then. But sometimes they'll happen right then. Sometimes it'll happen in a period of time. But you were obedient. You did that. Can you imagine when we go to heaven and, and all the people say, like, man, the, the way you walked, the way you, you did things, and it, man, it just, it just motivated me. And, and, and that's, it, it's like when, when Pastor was saying, when Sister Don was saying about him, about he, how he sacrificed, sacrifices. I mean, we feel good when they tell us something because it, we don't do it for, for, for the credit, for nothing. We do it because God has put that in our hearts and we, we're grateful and the gratitude to what he's done in our lives. But when you hear that something like that, man, that just boosts you up. You're like, yeah. All right, let's go, God. And you keep doing it. Because, yeah, the discouragement sometimes comes. Even, even when, when people that, that were going to be there, they're not there no more. But you just got to keep your focus on God. He, he will never forsake us. He's always there for us. And like I was telling you, if our love has gone cold, it's because of the lawlessness, the iniquity, the evil. So we got we to... Gotta, you know when, when, when that uh, check engine light comes on? We, we got to check ourselves. 
We got to make sure that when 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 it's it, when it's time to to walk them streets, when it's time to 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 take the gospel and everything, that 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 we're equipped with the with 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 the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He 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 is with us. But we want to want him more and more and more. That that that's how you when you got that thirst and that hunger of him, when you want more of him. And like I tell you, I mean, it wasn't always that way. A felony, five-year probation, caught in drugs and everything. So when, when, when we lost everything and um, we ended up moving to my, my parents' house, which actually on top, it was a garage and it was just a, a room up there. And I just made fun of me. I said, when you had to go to the kitchen, you had to get out and turn to get to the stove. It was that small. But, but we were there for a while because we pretty much lost everything. But I remember when we just had like the milk and the dozen of eggs. But always, always, there'd be a 12-pack or an 18-pack. It always made it to the fridge. And I just got tired. It was, because you get tired. I remember I just got on my knee. I said, God, just help me, God. Help me. And my sister that, she was in God's path like for 16 years, somewhere on there. Um, she was the one like, she sent me out to a retreat in Bradenton over there. But she was always like, oh, go, go. I remember when I got off on, usually that's the way how construction workers work. When we get off, we'll go to one place, cash our check, and get a six-pack. And with the big bottles, not, not the regular cans, the big bottles. So we drank that, and then we'll go, he'll go cash his check another store and get another six-pack. So when we were finishing dropping everybody out, my brother was driving, and, and he was the last one. And I'm like, well, here, he said, no, you take the rest of them. I said, no. And I even laughed, and no, uh, my wife has my luggage ready. I'm, I'm going to church, and I just started laughing it off because I was drunk. And ended up going to church. It was like uh, 7, 7.30, the service. It was there in Haines City. And, and before they send you out to the retreat, they have a service, and they do a food downstairs and everything. So when I was there, I remember my niece came up to me, and she's like, hey, uncle, he said, somebody smells like beer. I said, I must be one of those brothers or sisters over there. But it was myself. And, and that weekend, I tell you, God took everything away from me. The alcohol, the methamphetamine, he just took it off. Because, like I tell you, I went there Saturday, and, and same thing, like I tell you, I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I wasn't able to receive it. So I was there Saturday, and, and then, I mean, that Friday, and then that Saturday, like in the evening, it, it, it was like he just hit me. And he hit me, and, and that's what he told me, hey, it's your last time. But it was more like he was hugging me, holding me, and telling me, hey, I'm enough. I'm enough. You can get through it. You can get through anything. And like I tell you, I mean, I didn't have to go to no 12 months or six months or, or six-week plan or nothing. He took it to me like that. And, and you know how, how family is because even when they, they got drunk that, that the next weekend, I was over there, like, picking up the, the beer cans. I said, Heavenly Father, I was praying for the people that were drinking and everything. And I remember my brother says, hey, I give you two weeks, man. You'll be back with us. And September is going to be 15 years. And like I tell you, like I tell you, if we know what every step and every place that we've been through in our lives, and, and the majority of the time has been because of our decisions, but that you truly surrender to God and, and allow for him for that opportunity to be able to, to show his true selfness, his fullness in your life, that, man, you will never want to come back. You will never want to do anything else. What, what I've learned, that even, even being doing events, giving out food, I mean, that, there's been people saying, man, how do you do it, man? You're always busy. You're always, man, there's been times I wake up and I, I feel my hands swollen. You probably, my hands swollen, my feet cramping, and I already got to get up and I got to, hey, the day's here. I say, look, God, I've been putting your kingdom first. This, 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 is, this is your body. This body of the Holy Spirit. This is not my body. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I receive strength. And at that moment, it's, it starts leaving. I get the strength, and hey, I got my next day. But I've learned also when, when you're occupied in his business, yes, temptation will come, but you're able to catch it. You're not able to fall and be like, oh, I already did. No, you're able to catch it. 
That's what when you when you're moving, it's more time you're spending with him. I used to be like right now, as I was praising God, it came to my mind like right now that the, the, the basketball season was over. And right now I, I would be dreaded because, man, the football season, what I got to do? And I'd be like, like, I'd be like lost because there was no sports that I watched at, at that time. It was funny because on, on Sunday, I, I said, uh, uh, for Sunday evening, I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A, get me some Chick-fil-A, and I'm going to watch game seven, which the series was over on game six. Is I ended up watching that game. And then Pastor was like, oh, funny how you know the game seven was going to be on today. <laughs> but I, I used to be a person that I, I would watch three games on Sunday. You know, the, 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 the 12 o'clock, the 4 o'clock, and then the, the football, not football not, uh, at nighttime. I was like plugged into it. I would see myself. You know, it was, it was funny because on Sundays and Wednesdays, I was out there washing my car. I was washing my car. I would even look at churches and I'd be like, because there was nothing in me that, that, that can show you that, oh, God was with me. There was nothing in me. When I was in Iraq, they had to take away my M16 A2 because I, was, I wanted to take my life away. When, when they would throw the mortars and they would bombard here and there, man, I was like, God, let it, let. I remember one time I told God, God, let a, a bomb hit me right here. And I kept walking through this bridge. I hit a hole and I busted my knee like bad. Kind of God saying like, no, you're not going nowhere. And you know, the next day I went to that bridge and there was no hole. But I remember I stepped my ankle. I, I, I kind of twisted my ankle and I felt hard. And it was God calling me because I wasn't in God's past. I was in Iraq at the at the at the most dangerous time, it was in October 2005 when they had the elections and everything. And we were like 15 kilometers south of Baghdad. It was a triangle they called Triangle of Death. It was Mama Dia, Lucifia, and Judafia. And there was just, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't recommend this to you, but like the, the, the smell of death, the smell of bodies and everything. Humvees coming in with bodies exploding and have to wash them and everything. I mean, we've seen a lot of things. And how God brought me back. He had a purpose in my life. So why would I not be glorifying him? Why would I not be speaking of him? See, right now, every Tuesday at 630, we're, we're praying right there across the city hall at the Veterans Park in Haines City. At 630, we start praying. And the, the one that's a mayor now, Mayor Ann Huffman, she came to one of our very first events because she was running for commissioner seat number five. And she came and asked me, hey, could I speak? And she spoke and, and thanked everybody. And then she said, hey, would you pray for me? And we prayed for her. She won the seat. So right now she's a, she's a mayor. And right now she's speaking of things that she wants to do within the park, things that we've been trying to do that we, don't, we haven't been able to, but the way God's opening doors. And when you're obedient to God, God's going to open, start opening doors in your life. I know like the youth that are out here, sometimes you go to mom and dad, mom and dad can't understand you. But there's God that if you call on him, he's going to show himself to you. A lot of times we don't say these are the preachers of tomorrow. They're the preachers of today. God wants you to use you today. God wants you. You know your, your friends from school and everything or things that they go through. You know that. A lot of times we get embarrassed. But hey, if you call it out, if you do a prayer. Imagine if you pray for someone who have your friends. Your pastor has shown it that when he goes to school, all the little kids are dragging. I hope you're not dragging your head because you're the child of the most high. God wants to use you at the middle school or at the high school. Amen. Stop and think that, that you, you got freedom also in there through the youth. You're powerful. That's why the enemy raises up against you. The enemy don't even want you to realize how much power is in you. I always tell the youth, if you turn to God, if you're obedient to God, you're going to be walking with God's favor. All the blessings are going to blossom out for you. See, we're going through the consequences of our sins, what we did. So we turn to God. But when you walk with that power and that anointing, Man, you're dangerous. You got to realize that. Even, even at home, that you call on God. Maybe God is touching on your heart so you can stand on your family's gap. You never know. But this is the moment. This is the time. We will call for these times. A lot of people are saying, when is it going to go back to normal? We know it's not going to go back to normal. I've seen a picture of the 7-Eleven. It said the prophecy came through. And the gas is like 7-Eleven and the diesel 7-Eleven. <laughs> so, yes, there's a lot of chaos. Yes, there's a lot of things out there. But that's why the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We carry the anointing. We carry the power and the authority. If you look at your hands, these hands were done. See, the Bible don't say to pray for the sick. It says heal the sick. 
So even myself, when I, when I pray for somebody, they don't get healed. I come back to God. I say, God, I don't want to hold that anointing. If it's me, show me, guide me, God. Tell me what I got to do. If it's more fasting, if it's more prayer. I, I used to not even know how fasting was. I remember I used to work at a, at a hard place in, in, in back when I started. And I said, you know what, God, I'm not going to eat nothing. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to drink water. And even my dad was saying, man, that's too hard. You need to eat. I said, no, no, no. And you know what? That day, the machine broke down. We were inside. We were, and I was, I was like glorifying God. I thank God. I told you that I used to be a womanizer. God, when I turned to God, where did God take me? He took me to the Dundee Sutras place. There's all nothing but women there. I had my sister used to work there too, and they were called a sister-in-law, a sister-in-law. And I remember when I was up there, man, there was this girl that was just flirting and flirting and flirting. But I always brought my Bible, and I was reading and reading until they realized that, hey, I'm for real. Because even through whatever weakness you had, you're going to have to go through that too. And I remember that somebody passed away from, from there, and in the church that I was, I was with the praise and worship. I, I, I did the keyboard. And when them ladies started coming in and sitting down and all that, God just showed me, he's like, you see being faithful to me? Because it could have been like, they would have been, wasn't that the one that was going out with so-and-so? Wasn't that the one? And, and being faithful to God, God honors that to you in your life. God will honor you. Even whatever you're going through, if you surrender it to God, God's going to honor it to you. A lot of times we, oh, I, 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 God knows my heart, but I, I'm going, no, no, no. Yes, uh, the heart is so deceitful. But God can, God can free you of everything. You just got to be willing to surrender everything to him. I'll tell you this thing. Stop and think if we would just walk in here and, and, and we had, everybody had a screen right here. And every sin would be revealed that we're hiding. Man, everybody be like covering our, our screen. Or pretty much walk in here naked. Everybody be like. Because we're open books in God's presence. He knows everything that we go through. We can't hide nothing. Imagine, I mean... If there's a struggle that you're going through and God's been showing, showing you, <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because uh, Saturday, well, it's not funny, but Saturday, everything was peaceful. And all of a sudden, we had a storm come in. The, the small tents that I had, all of them got busted. Crank, like, it was like if somebody did this to them. And, and just the biggest one, we're all there holding to the poles and all that. And I'm like, and... I started joking around and said, all right, Jonah, who's Jonah out here? Who's in disobedience? <laughs> so when we're driving back home, Jason's like, uh, Dad, remember that you said that you should have taken 10 chairs to the prayer and you didn't take him? Maybe you were the one in disobedience. <laughs> I said, all right, so with my children, I don't need no enemies, I said. <laughs> but it was funny, but we were able to bless people, we were able to, to, to pass the word, give testimonies, and, and, and God moved, and God, God, God has a, a, a purpose in your life. You're needed out there. Believe me, you're needed. And this is the thing that God's purpose will be fulfilled. His will, will will be done. Why not be part of that? Why not be? See, he calls the soldiers for a reason. Yeah, there's a war, but we're more than conquerors. That's why the Bible says the soldiers and God get entangled with the issues of life. Whatever it's going, you're going through, surrender to God. God, that's not for me to carry. It's yours. And he just, do like the little penguins from Madagascar. Just smile and wave. You keep walking. See, we got to get the joy of everything in life. The joy of everything in life. Even through the trials and tribulations. Even if the Bible even says that the, the, the righteous were still, we were still going to get persecuted. We're still going to go through. Man, there's so many things that, that like, like I tell you, even at the events, I say, man, I could tell you my whole life since I turned into God. And either I'm going to discourage you. Or you're going to say God walks with that man. Because we go through so much. But we glorify God. We, thank, we even thank God for the trials and tribulations. Because he has created us to be this way. We thank God even through the suffering that we went through the churches. It's like Pastor says because he, he teaches us how not to be. And how to be able to love one another. But that's going to be the main thing. That's, that's what's going to take you from glory to glory and victory to victory. That you will renew your love. That you will renew your love. Go back to your first love. What were the things that you were doing? Uh, I don't know about you, but man, I still got them butterflies. 15 years and still got them butterflies when I come into the house of the Lord. Because there's one thing being in His presence. You're in His presence every day. But when you come to His house, man, it's, it's totally different. Why? Because we come in fellowship together. We come in, in the, just the, 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 the manifestation of His Holy Spirit in this place. And it, it, it's not because of me. It's because of you. Because of, it's because of all of us that we come together. I was talking with Sister Kay how all different walks of life, we just come together. 
God is the one that brings us together. Imagine we're just all white people, only all black people, only Mexican people. It's all different walks of life. We come together. And as being with different walks of life, it's already all, also all different trials and tribulations that we have gone through. But we know that we're more than conquerors in His presence. Amen. Let's bow our heads down. Heavenly Father, my Lord, we just thank you for your word, God. We thank you for who you are, God, and that you still move in the midst of it all, God. My Lord, right now, God, just look into our hearts, God. And even as we're, we just heard your voice and it's in our mind, God, my Lord, that if we need to return to our first love, God, let it be tonight, God. Return us to your first love, God. My Lord, just bring those butterflies back, God. Bring, my, my Lord, just bring that enthusiasm, God. Let us be radical for you, God. My Lord, we know there's so much need out there, God. So right now, God, fill every single one of us up, God. Just embrace us with your presence, God. That's it right there. Right there where you're at, just take a deep breath. Just to take a deep breath and just receive what God has for you. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for who we are. Hallelujah. God, we declare never the same, God. Lord, that you have spoken into our lives, God. If we have drifted away, God, we know and we understand, God. It's because of iniquity because of evil. So right now, God, just cleanse it with the blood of Jesus, my Lord, that we can be whiter than snow, God. And even through your love, God, that we come closer to you and even closer to one another, God. My Lord, just forgive us, my Lord, if there was any division causing among us, God, for whatever reason, God. My Lord, that you have control over everything, God. Let it be just your love, my Lord, that brings us all together, God. My Lord, we declare never the same, God that you will start revealing yourself like never before, God. My Lord, wake us in the midst of the hours, God. Speak to us, God. My Lord, give us that wisdom, that knowledge, give us that discernment, God, to know that it is you, God. My Lord, just walk with us, God. We need more of you, God. My Lord, all the you that are right here, God, just embrace them with your presence, God. My Lord, you have a divine purpose over their lives, God. I know there's so much chaos. I know there's so much things that maybe at our time, my Lord, we never saw it, God. But now they're seeing it at the schools, my Lord. They're seeing it through the media, God. My Lord, let them just separate themselves for you, God. Sanctify them, God, for your glory, God. We just thank you, God, and we glorify you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Have a good night.